So are you dragging your nag around the country once again? Yes, that seems to be sort of uh, the, the bane of my life, continuing... The horse, I mean, into by the, the way, yes, not <laughs> uh, I, I thought you were about the wife. Anyway, to. so no, it's, it's, it's been a busy time from that. I didn't go away, I just spent time at home cutting grass and mucking out the horses. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Mm. I went and did a bit of Damon Hilling. I surfed a little bit down on the very south coast, down in Devon, which was brilliant. Did fun. you see Damon? I didn't see Damon, but do you know, I've been in this paddock and I've met four or five people who are on the same beach as me on the same day and we didn't know it, so... Well, well, well. And it's going to rain on Sunday, by the way. I've just checked the latest oh. forecast just before we came on air. And there is a chance of rain for the race on Sunday, which really Always wrong. things up. Made a chance. I'd never have made a living as a weatherman. I barely make one as a sports <laughs> presenter. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is what uh, some of the uh, paddock have been up to in their summer break. Fernando Alonso taking to the waves, getting a bit of air. Max Verstappen in his pool. Nico getting a kiss from his good lady wife. Jensen. Uh, he said that really, had a frozen head on it, that beer, when yeah, he put his picture up as well. Yeah. And, no, well I, I find this funny, because good old Kimi Räikkönen, when, when he was asked yesterday whether he got up to anything in the, in the holidays, he said nothing special. <laughs> <laughs> I've sure been to it. I've loved yeah, that. Yeah, I've cool. wasn't watching that one. Um, and Daniel Ricciardo not only saw Jensen Button on holiday, but he also looked at a new career, which we don't think he's going to be very successful at. You can no. make your own mind up. Have a look at this. This is what Daniel Ricciardo got up to. My name is Daniel Ricciardo, but you can call me racer though. I rap fresh, I rap clean. Come Sunday, I'm hella mean. Oh, all right, look. When they see me coming up, oh, in the mirrors, their body freezes up and sends them shivers. Like my boy G-Easy say, we all lady killers. All right, let's get some rhythm. let's go. Look. <laughs> Turn it off. That was shocking. There was a lot more of that. Shocking. No, he needs a bit more practice, doesn't he? My he's lord. In there. No, he's not. He's gone to driver's briefly at the moment, but um, we should play it to him when he comes back as well. <laughs> he probably doesn't want to see it. No, I'm I'm the thought. Fine no. Okay, uh, let's uh, bring it up to date with the drivers and constructors as it looks, as we said. Uh, just the nine races to go, and it's Lewis who has converted that 43 point deficit. Uh, into a 19-point lead over his teammate Nico Rosberg. Daniel Ricciardo tucked in. He's still got a gap of 18 points between himself and his teammate with the two Ferrari drivers, two points between them uh, right now, sandwiched in between. Further down, Sergio Perez and Force India are looking pretty good right now. And in the constructors, uh, it is Mercedes who have a very healthy lead uh, Red Bull tucked in and 14 ahead of Ferrari. Here is Lewis and what he had to say about the penalties that he's going to take this weekend. This weekend might be a bit harder. You are starting from the back of the grid. Um, you, I, I seem to remember a couple of years ago you did that in Hungary, finished third. Uh, could, can you win from the back of the grid? Uh, I think realistically uh, the likeliness of that happening is very, very uh, minimal. Your immediate competition, your teammate, is starting from the back of the grid at this race. Does that make your life much easier this weekend? For sure. It's less difficult, yes, because Lewis is the biggest competitor that I have. You can never say never. I'm still going to go for it, but it's, it's unlikely. But it's, it's really about trying to get as many points as I can, whatever that is. Has anything changed in your, in your approach? Anything that you've thought about over the last three or four weeks and thought, I might do this differently? No, nothing. Still uh, just full gas. Full gas for Rosberg. Um, this is the extent of Lewis Hamilton's penalties incurred so far this weekend. And remember, he, he could well, uh, probably will put in another engine in for P3. So right now it's 30 place grid penalties. Remember, he's gone beyond uh, the five number uh, to seven for the MGUH and the turbocharger. So the decision by uh, Mercedes is to get those extra engines into the pool. And then I suppose, Johnny, you can run them into the ground if there's going to be an update, which we believe there will be available perhaps to Nico and both of them. Just Suzuka. before you come in, Johnny, we've just heard from Mercedes some breaking news that both drivers are running upgraded power units. They've used five tokens, Mercedes, right. on these to bring these this weekend? Well, I think Lewis has been a lucky boy because considering all these penalties that he would have got with the new engines he would have come, if they would have come later, that would have been something they may have had to deal with in a, in a very different it's, way. So are we saying from that that there, there is not to be an upgrade in Suzuka or is that...? Well, this has just come from Mercedes now. I would imagine if they have any tokens left, they will strike, still try and upgrade uh, before Suzuka. But at the moment, if they're on a level playing field right now, do the team try and keep it level throughout the rest of the season? That's what I think they would do, yes, to try and keep it level from now on. OK, um, before we have a look at today's action out there on the track, here's a few things you might want to know about this classic circuit.
Almost feel like we need our shades on in the paddock here. The sunlight still bursting through, Paul. What would have worried the drivers, though, when they came to Spa and saw how hot it was going to be this weekend? It's just the energies of this track. It goes down to tyres. How can they manage them? We've got the super soft, the soft and the medium tyres. They are at the softer end of the scale, and it's how they're going to progressively get them through the stints managing their tyres for performance. Well, let's see how they manage today. Beautiful conditions. I've never seen Spa like this for a first practice on a Friday. 31 degrees, the air temperature. On the track, it was nearly 40 degrees, and the helicopter looking down on, well, halo time. Four drivers running the halo. First time we've seen it run in anger today, though. A proper lap from Rosberg. Yeah, and Mercedes actually choosing to run it through the whole session, so obviously visibility wasn't key. It'll be interesting to see what his comments are, how that's going to go forward for the next few years. New power unit in for Lewis Hamilton. He's prepared to take engine penalties and start at the back of the grid this weekend the red bull of max verstappen attracting a lot of interest here and what a save that was yeah it got mum's attention she was obviously <laughs> she's been a racer herself so she knows what it's all about lost in the shadows esteban ocon on his debut knocking over the code and nearly a photographer as well and maybe getting a ticking off from his engineers i don't know here's lewis hamilton's teammate nico rosberg though really pushing it today look good in the morning session another fresh power unit going in for hamilton though in between sessions and on the banks all they want to see is max verstappen but sebastian vettel first did ferrari struggle today or was he just having an off day i think sebastian was having a difficult day kimmy looked a little more comfortable but they've got a lot of work to do trying to be red bull they're in control at the moment this is jolian palmer he lost drive managed to restart his car i've never seen that before no it's just uh, one of these devices they have defaults nice to see the team radio band back that's why Neil will tend to get out there and show the fans what he can do. Medium compound tyre for Hamilton, lacking grip. Keeping these tyres alive was a real struggle, as you can see, for Valtteri Bottas, something to ponder about. We could be on for a three-stopper here, do you think? Definitely. The medium tyre just looks too hard. It's sliding around, it's getting too hot. The performance isn't there, and uh, yeah, the soft tyre is definitely the one to be on. Talking about getting too hot, under the collar this time for Sebastian Vettel. He wanted that manner out of the way. The pace, the hot pace, came from Max Verstappen. Third time he's been fastest in a session. Looks like he means business this weekend. It does. You know, it's one of his home Grand Prix. He's got everyone here. He's He's looking confident and uh, you know Danny Rick will be giving him a hard time tomorrow but I think we've got Red Bull similar to close to the front well we'll see if Mercedes have got extra pace when we get to practice tomorrow but today it was Red Bull's afternoon wasn't it with Daniel Ricciardo Max Verstappen two and one let's hear first from Verstappen and some of the other drivers who have been experiencing these beautiful sunny conditions on the track here at Spa it was quite a difficult day because uh, this track is not easy to set up the car so uh, the first practice and even in the beginning of the second one yeah you are working a lot on that but luckily it paid off at the end so uh, yeah very happy you know to to be first here in front of your your fans it's uh, it's of course great and definitely when i crossed the line i could see a lot of fans cheering me on with the flag so uh, it just gives you a lot of motivation daniel your thoughts you ran the halo this morning what are your thoughts on it could you see coming up through rouge what, what was it like I think it's uh, it's not too bad, you know. It's it's definitely still a work in progress. Um, first time I've ran it, you know, I'd only run the the aero screen before, so it was definitely different again. Um, but you know, I think it was it was definitely good to test it and to test it here. I think that's what we got to keep doing for now. If you know more drivers can test it before the end of the season and just keep giving feedback. Um, so yeah, I'll give give some feedback tonight. We've been given a sheet um to sort of give it the yeah a bit of homework exactly quite warm for spa and i think everybody was struggling to make the tires last so in the end i think everybody was sliding quite a, a lot which uh, at least the cars i saw were struggling a lot which is a bit of a shame but uh, i guess it's the same for for everyone so we need to try and work on that uh, because the temps should be like that also tomorrow and, and sunday but in terms of competitiveness it's difficult to say I don't think everybody had clean runs, so it's uh, probably hard to judge. What are your thoughts in terms of qualifying? Are you going to bother to run in Q3? Do you want to put a marker down to your teammate and show him you've got the pace around here, or will you just save a set of tyres to start the race off? Uh, that's for the team to decide. I honestly don't know what the programme is. I'm just focusing on trying to get the car as well prepared for the race. And, um, yeah, I'll take their lead on that. Um, I don't particularly care about doing anything for Nico, so I'll just let him do him and I'll do me. OK, just following up on the conversation we were having before we saw the action for today, and uh, a big thanks actually to Mercedes who have this excellent WhatsApp group that keeps us up to date with uh, everything that's going on from inside the team as and when. So uh, in, in reply to what we were talking about, whether there would be another upgrade available, they tell us that uh, they're not going to pre-announce when they might have that upgrade. Uh, currently, though, Suzuka is a scheduled point for the 
the final units of the season to enter the pool, but the plans are subject to change. They've got six tokens remaining. No obligation to use them all, and the number of tokens spent isn't necessarily proportional, of course, to the amount of performance gained. But that would suggest that if there is another upgrade to be taken, Lewis doesn't have to take it. Um, Nico's only got four, used four engines so far. He wouldn't have to take a penalty. It does suggest there might be another penalty along the way for Lewis. Well, that's the thing. I think that's where maybe the team are going to look at it. Is that going to be uh, putting the advantage onto Nico? Probably yes, but you're right. Is it? Would he take it at that particular point in the championship? Because if it's only a tenth, he might think, actually, it's not worth it because I'll be able to sort of drive that myself. Because we've seen how well he's driven recently, where he's actually turned it down to look after the engine to extend its life. So we still saw the pace was still there from that front. And also, if you think about it, take away this weekend where he will have the penalty. We've got, what, three races before Suzuka anyway. If he yeah. can build up a gap within that time, he might not yeah. think it's worth exactly. it's worth taking it. But it was very open today, Johnny. Four teams in the hunt around there, or do you think it'll just be Mercedes? I mean, Red Bull do look to have picked up and, and be going pretty well. Yeah, well, I think they have. We know the power unit itself has actually, you know, improved a lot. We know how good that car always is year after year. It always comes to this track. It always seems to come alive, especially in that middle sector. They back off the wing to give themselves the sector one and three a little bit more speed, but they never lose out in the middle. So I think, potentially, I think we've got a nice little battle going on. Which yeah, is great. we do. Uh, when we come back, we'll discuss Man of the Day and what's effectively uh, a home race with his Belgian mother here in attendance and watching Max Verstappen, the star of that second practice session. Will he be the man to pick up his second win of his, of his short career? Welcome back to uh, some beautiful sunshine here in Spa for the Belgian Grand Prix. Now, yesterday, Paul Oresta spoke to the man who seems to be at the centre of most of the driver rumours at the moment. He went on, out on track with Sergio Perez. So we're here with Sergio Perez. We're going to get a bit of an idea of what he's thinking into next year. Sergio, thanks for joining us. You, you said just before the summer break that you're going to have some time to think where are we going to see you driving, what car next year, and uh, have you come to a decision yet? No, the decision hasn't been taken. Uh, summer break was too short <laughs> to, to make up a decision, but uh, I really hope that in the next couple of weeks, uh, I don't want the next month, you know, because I think there is no more time to, to be to be wasting or to, to take the decision. I think uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, hopefully we can announce uh, something. I always say that I'm very pleased and happy with the, with the team, so hopefully we can announce uh, something very quickly. Do you think that's something that you want to maybe explore? Do you feel that you're a bit limited being with Sahara Force India? You've obviously achieved some great podiums. Yes. But do you feel making the jump is the right time in your career at the age you are? Because you obviously have good years ahead of you. And I think uh, to take the battle, upwards do you need like the likes of a manufacturer to make that happen i mean uh, i'll just say you know our our careers are very critical with the timings you know and and to become a world champion you have to be in the right place at the right moment uh, and it's so difficult to get i mean uh, who knows where is going to be the ideal place for my career next year no one knows you know it's it's a hard decision is it a decision you just take solely or is it one that you're gonna you're gonna have to wait for something else to move to happen uh, I think at this stage uh, it doesn't depend on anything else, you know. I think decision has been taken, uh, but it will be just a matter of, of to see if, if everything happens and if everything comes together, you know. Deals are always very com complex and difficult to get in place, but uh, if it happens and if it's the best for me, hopefully, hopefully we can move forward. Good. Well, I'm sure we'll see you on the grid. What car? We'll keep guessing, but um, I suppose if you keep delivering, that's the main thing. And uh, yeah, all the best and uh, happy contract negotiations. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Paul, um, what would you do if you were in Sergio Perez's shoes? Say, for example, you had the choice between Force India, who are once again having a, a fantastic season, bearing in mind uh, the size of them compared with some of the other teams, or go and take the risk, the gamble, on a work seat at Renault. I think you have to say take the gamble on the work seat at Renault. You know, Renault are in your serious business. They're talking four to five year programme getting to the front. Sergio has that in his age. You know, he has the, he's, he's young enough. Sahara Force India, they're a great team, I was part of them, love them to bits, but are they going to give them the chance to win races? And I don't think they are. Going to Renault, maybe in the future, they've done it with Alonso not long ago. And the big thing I took from that, he said, the decision has been made. Now, if the decision was made, then if it was Force India, it would have already been out. And that's where the, I think the signal is already that he's on the move. What do you need to see from a team then? Because Renault this year obviously have struggled. What, what does he need, what do you need to see as a driver from a team to convince you to make a gamble like that, take a gamble like that? 
He needs the he needs the confidence that the design teams there. Now Bob Bell's obviously gone back there. Now Renault were running about the paddock trying to employ 160 people at the beginning of the year. So they you know they've got the pick of what it is. People that have worked at Enstow and I think loved it. They went away obviously when they were in a difficult difficult part of where they were. People want to come back. They're already trying to get the jobs back, and I think that's where it comes. And Renault have made a bigger impact than we ever thought they could do on the engine side, you know, compared to Mercedes. So. Listen, 2017 is a whole new Formula One, maybe a whole new challenge, is what Sergio needs, given his time at Force India. Let's get some uh, reaction. Justin, this was a few moments ago, Deputy Team Principal Bob Furley speaking with Ted. The situation with Sergio, I find it slightly perplexing. I thought he was staying, and he says his sponsors are saying other things. No, I don't think so. I think what Sergio's saying really is that both our drivers are under contract, so, and that's the first phase of anything you've got to do. With Checo, there are some quite complicated uh, commercial arrangements that go around it, and those have got to be done separately, and that's where we're in the process of now. Um, you know, and there's also negotiation. Commercial negotiations are exactly what they are, commercial. Okay, <laughs> so you're not in fear that he's going to take him and his partners elsewhere? No, not at all. I think um, I would be a very, I'm very optimistic that they'll be with us for next year, but it is a process, and uh, we have to go through that. Just going back to the opportunities for 2017, uh, we've seen just the progress that Renault have made on the engine side this year. I mean, this weekend is evidence of that, isn't it? Um, but uh, do you think with that blank piece of paper, there could be a coming together of the teams? Or do you suggest that next year it's going to again be perhaps a, a two, three horse race? It will always be a two, two or three horse race at the moment, at the top, I think. But we may be proved wrong, but certainly where Renault are, the move forward, whether Sergio goes there or not, I still think long term, over the next three to five years, they're going to be a good team to be with. And I think you're going to see somebody with a bit of respect in this paddock will go there. All right, thanks, Paul, for the moment. Uh, now, this track is a favourite with fans and drivers alike, but the unpredictable weather can make it difficult to win around here. Some have done better than most. Years old, the youngest Grand Prix winner for a long, long time. Schumacher's going to try and cut him off. Hill is alongside him and goes through. No! Schumacher's still marginally ahead. Out of the bus stop for the 14th and last time, a magnificent 16th career victory for Michael Schumacher, who starts 16th on the grid and superbly wins the Belgian Grand Prix. First gear this is, and as you can see already, it's Ayrton Senna in the lead. Senna is leading, Prost is second, Alvareto is already up to third. Senna has regained that lead, and Mansell spinning, Mansell spins, Another McLaren 1-2, and this time the champagne shower for team manager Joe Ramirez on the rostrum. Raikkonen gets his sixth victory of this season. So look at Barrichello stop there, but out comes Raikkonen. It's a slam dunk from there, surely, for Raikkonen. Thank you. Into first place, and catch me if you can, but physical having a bit of a look back, but no, Raikkonen will have none of that. He's done it! Kimi Raikkonen wins for Ferrari in Belgium! Kimi Raikkonen, the king of Spa, but it's Michael Schumacher who has the most wins for the Belgian Grand Prix with six out in the centre there uh, with five. Our own Damon Hill there on three. Lewis hoping to join him this weekend. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I think in a, uh, in, a, in a bookshop near you, watching the wheels, by the way. I wonder if he remembers that. Damon's book. Thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> also added to that list, uh, Sebastian Vettel on there as well, with just uh, two wins for the Belgian Grand Prix. Ferrari some work to do this weekend because it was Red Bull who topped the timesheets today. One man who dearly loved to get his first win at the Belgian Grand Prix is Max Verstappen, and he spoke to Ted earlier this week. A lot of young fans I've noticed. Um, we're in the summer in the UK, a lot of exam results coming out at the moment. Can you identify with that or have you, did you sort of have to leave that part of your life aside a bit? I didn't really finish my school fully um, because I was very committed to the racing and of course it's a risk because in the end it's very important to get your degrees and everything but um, I took the risk you know to 
to focus more on my racing and to, to maximize everything I could. And luckily it paid off. But of course, when you, know, when you go into car racing and your first season isn't great and then your second is also not pulling off great or even before in go-karting, you know, your parents also should tell you, hey, this is going into the right direction or the wrong direction. You shouldn't keep um, you know, having false hope. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah, my dad supported me in that. If, as soon as he saw that I didn't have the talent you know, to become a Formula One driver, he would have never uh, helped me that much you know, yeah. to, to become one. I think there you have to find if you're going to make it or not. If you're not going to make it, you have to focus on something else. I think it's safe to say one of the two men in that VT doesn't need to worry about his exam grades affecting his life in the future. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's true. <laughs> i tell you what, what is also right. true. Just think about what the, the sellout of them. I mean, I, they've, they've been down on numbers of the last couple of years here at Spa. 20 but... to 25%, I was told yesterday, yeah. is the increase this year is the max factor they're the, calling The it. max factor. Imagine if they got Stoffel van Dorn into a car for next year and have the... The Dutchies against the Belgians here. That would be, I mean, we really lift it. I mean, he, he has really piqued something in the motorsport fans, hasn't he, on the continent? He has done, definitely. You know, why not? It's very close to where he is. I just said he was born here, but there's one very important thing as well. It's not raining, it's sunny. It makes a difference. What, you and, think uh, the fans won't come if it gets the people out? I think it definitely does, you know, looking at the weather. And, uh, you know, hopefully, see a good race. Max certainly turned it on today, didn't he? dealing with the pressure that's what we want we want somebody at the front that's going to be able to do that he does we, I mean, we asked Johnny the question sorry Rach um, about whether it, we, we think it's a four horse race here um, and I think Christian was expecting Ferrari Christian Horner we spoke to him after P1 was expecting Ferrari to be ahead of Red Bull that's not been the case surprised you? I think it's surprised how much further up the road they are they just look strong even compared to Mercedes FP1 they kind of done their work kept it quiet but when they turned it on they turned it on and uh, we all know Danny Rick when he turns it on in quality he seems to have another another gear compared to Max